before command is describes my work on calculating the growth of the Russian economy before the revolution. I became interested in this topic because if you read Lenin and if you read the Bolshevik or Soviet literature, you learn that the economy of Russia before the revolution was a very badly performing economy, uh, particularly in agriculture. And it was for this reason, the bad economic performance, that the Bolshevik Revolution occurred. This is also the standard interpretation that you would learn if you were to study Russian history in American universities because this Leninist view of economic performance was taken up by very prominent Western scholars. I decided that this is a stereotype which has not been tested. So I worked for many years recalculating the growth of the Russian economy beginning in 1885, which is when the railroads were built. This was also uh, two decades after the peasant emancipation. So this would be a good period to test how well the Russian economy was performing. The surprise of my research was that Russia was the fastest growing European economy between 1885 and 1913. And a bigger surprise is the fact that agriculture was perhaps the fastest growing agriculture in Europe. Perhaps we should not have been surprised because we know that in this period, Russia became the world's second largest exporter of grain after the United States. Therefore, um, as a consequence of this work, there began to gather together a group of skeptics, including myself, who challenged this view that the October Revolution was a result of poor economic performance. If you do this work, you can also project ahead. This is called counterfactual something that didn't happen but might have happened. And you can ask, well, if there had been no October Revolution and Russia had continued along this path that it had uh, begun from 1885 to 1913, where would Russia have been, let's say, in 1940? The answer is that Russia would have been among the poor European economies, but the Russian people would have been relatively prosperous. They probably would have been as prosperous as the countries in the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Another thing that uh, my work challenges is one of the basic tenets of Lenin, and Stalin, which is the so-called agrarian crisis hypothesis. As you may know, Lenin's, the foundation of Lenin's policies was something in Russian called smuchka, which meant an alliance between the worker and the peasant. So the so-called foundation of the 
October Revolution was this alliance between the peasants and the workers. One reason why Lenin and Stalin believed that the peasants would join the workers was the fact that agriculture was in crisis. And this was called the agricultural crisis hypothesis. What my work shows is there, that agriculture was doing not well in the central agricultural zones, the so-called Chornoziem, but it was doing well uh, in Western Siberia in the areas of expansion. So if you look at agriculture in total, you get this contrary result to Lenin and Stalin, that agriculture was actually performing very well. So I would say the basic uh, conclusion that I drew was that the standard interpretation of the Bolshevik Revolution as having economic causes uh, was incorrect. I must say that this work was completed in 1982, which is a long time ago. And I did the work not in Russian archives. I did the work in the United States and in Germany. So I was not able to use all of the material and archives that are available. It is my hope that Russian scholars will take up this issue again. It's always wise in a scientific discipline to have someone check your work. There's no guarantee that I did not make mistakes or that later material will sh show different results. I'm pleased to report that young Russian scholars have become very interested in this issue and are doing very good work, uh, which so far, fortunately, confirms the results I found uh, 30 or 40 years ago. One of the things that they are able to do that I was not able to do was to look at this on a regional basis what regions were doing well, what regions were doing poorly. And this is a very important uh, extension of my work. So it is my hope that Russian scholars will uh, pursue this work using, with the full benefit of the Russian archives, which are now open. Indeed, there are some preliminary results from young Russian scholars, which uh, fortunately so far confirm what I found, but these younger scholars are able to expand my work and look at which regions were prospering, which regions were not. And the results, by the way, are quite uh, interesting because they find that uh, Siberia was among the most prosperous regions and uh, the far north was among the most prosperous regions and any region on a border was prosperous. So therefore, uh, I look forward to uh, a considerable amount of work on this issue being done. When I did this work, I was basically the only one interested. Now there are many scholars interested. If work like this is going to be done, it must be done in Russia by Russians. And I think this is happening. And I am pleased that I gave some impulse for this kind of research. Russia must come to terms with two major historical issues. One of these is the Russian economy and society before the revolution. Now, why did the revolution occur? 
was there a justification for the revolution? Did the revolution somehow make Russia better off? This is a very important historical question. The other question is Stalin and the Stalin command economy. Because here you have this very interesting result that a mass murderer who killed 20, 30 million people, not counting war, is regarded very highly by a large percent of the Russian population. So to me, if Russia is to come to terms with, it his with its history, it has to answer these two questions. <laughs>